We are now in the second week of the Easter season or Easter tide. Today we will be contemplating a text from Acts rather than Mark. For those of you who may be unfamiliar with lectionaries, um, they typically have four passages. The first reading is usually from the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament, um, a psalm, a second reading, which is usually from the epistles, and a gospel text. Um, during Eastertide, a reading from Acts is often substituted for the first reading for the, from the Hebrew Bible. Um, which is how Wilda Gaffney has structured the lectionary we are using. Um, and although we usually contemplate the gospel text in this group, I've decided to switch things up during this season and have us spend time pondering the text from Acts. I've chosen to do this for two reasons. Um, first, because we haven't contemplated passages from Acts before. Um, so these are new stories for us to ponder. And second, the gospel passages um, she chose for this season are from John. And I often find it challenging to prepare contemplations for texts from the gospel of John. They are just very circular and very wordy and very difficult for me to um, lead contemplations for. So I'm choosing to be kind to myself in this season, and we are going to switch it up and um, contemplate the, the first reading instead of the gospel reading for this Easter tide. Um, so the text we will ponder today is Acts chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 and 12 to 14. Um, before we begin, I want to note the verses in between, the verse 5 through 12, that are not included in this reading, because um, I think it's kind of important to understand what is not included. Um, in, that, in those verses, um, Jesus, the disciples asked Jesus, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? And Jesus tells them, the time is unknown. It's not for you to know the time. It's only from the Father in heaven to know. Um, but once again, he promises them the power of the Holy Spirit, and he commissions them to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. And then Jesus is lifted up into the heavens, a cloud taking him out of their sight. So that's happens in the middle of these verses that we're going to contemplate today. So having said that, let's go ahead and I will light my candle. I was having trouble with this last week too. I need to get a new one. Oh, let's rest for just a moment in God's presence before we begin. Hmm. Hmm. I'll pray for these graces to know Jesus more intimately, to love him more intensely, and to follow him more closely. Acts chapter 1, verses 3 to 5 and 12 to 14. Jesus presented himself to them, living after his suffering through many convincing proofs by appearing to them 40 days and speaking about the reign of God and staying with them Jesus commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, rather to wait there for the promise of the faithful one. What you heard from me. For John baptized with water, 
but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from this one. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. And when they entered the city, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All of these were persevering in prayer together with women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his sisters and brothers. Word of God, word of life. So before I guide you through the passage with questions and pauses, let's take a moment to center ourselves. Breathing in God's spirit and breathing out anything that distracts us from being in the presence of God. I pray again for our graces to know Jesus more intimately, to love him more intensely, and to follow him more closely. I invite you to enter the story. Jesus presented himself to them, living after his suffering through many convincing proofs, by appearing to them 40 days and speaking about the reign of God. What emotions stir within you as you reunite with Jesus after his brutal death and astonishing resurrection? How does his message about the reign of God resonate with you? What activities do you engage in with Jesus during these 40 days? Does it feel like Jesus will be, be with you now for eternity? In staying with them, Jesus commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, rather to wait there for the promise of the faithful one. What you have heard from me, he says. What do you notice about Jesus as he gives this command? How does it feel to receive this instruction to stay in Jerusalem? knowing something incredible is about to happen. How are the other followers of Jesus reacting?
Jesus continues explaining, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from this one. What images come to mind as you consider the significance of baptism with the Holy Spirit and the transformative power of this promise? How does it feel to know that you will soon receive this divine gift? Many days pass. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. As you take this short journey back to Jerusalem with the disciples to await the promised Holy Spirit, you can't help but keep in your mind the image of Jesus being lifted up into the heavens by a cloud. The bittersweet reality of having witnessed his resurrection and walked with him for 40 days is mixed with a sense of longing and loss at seeing him depart. How are you holding these conflicting emotions? What conversations do you have with your companions along the way, processing what you've experienced and anticipating what is yet to come? And when they entered the city, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Thomas the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were persevering in prayer together with women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his sisters and brothers. How does it feel to be in this space, surrounded by those who have followed Jesus from the beginning? What do you see, hear, and feel as you join them in prayer? I invite you to spend the next 10 minutes in a colloquy with the divine. Speak to God about what you experienced during the contemplation. What might God want to say to you about your life or the life of your community as it relates to this text?
When I sound my chimes, it will indicate that you have about a minute to wrap up your colloquy, after which time I will end the silence by reading this week's psalm. If you're doing the contemplation later with the recording, go ahead and hit pause now and spend as much time as you feel you need in conversation with God, and then come back whenever you're ready to hear the reading of the psalm. Our psalm this week is several verses from Psalm 104. It's verses 1 through 4, 10 through 15, and 27 through 30. Bless the fount of life, O my soul. Mother of all, my God, you are very great. You don honor and majesty, wrapped in light as a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent curtain. She who lays on the waters the beams of her upper chambers, she who makes the clouds her chariot. She is the one who rides on the wings of the wind. She is the one who makes the winds her celestial messengers, fire and flame her ministers. She is the one who makes springs gush forth in the torrents. They flow between the hills. They give drink to every wild animal. The wild donkeys slake their thirst. By the torrents, the birds of the heavens dwell. Among the branches, they give voice. She is the one who waters the mountains from her high chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. She is the one who makes grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for human labor, to bring forth food from the earth, and wine to make the human heart rejoice, with oil to make the face shine, and bread to sustain the human heart. All of these hope in you to provide their food in due season. You give it to them, they glean it. You open your hand, they are well satisfied. You hide your face, they are dismayed. When you collect their breath, they die. And to their dust, they return. You send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. Amen. <laughs>